Hi and welcome back to a follow-up video. A few days ago we were working on repairing some CPUs. We successfully repaired the 12900K, already sent it out to the giveaway winner as well. And now we are left with a 5600X which has some broken pins and a 5950X which has a broken pin plus a bent pin. I finally managed to get a replacement tip for my soldering iron and also the correct mechanical pencil so we can start working on them and hopefully fix them today. This would be the correct type of mechanical pencil with 0.3 millimeter thickness. The idea is to use this pencil, push it above the pin or over the pin and then use it to bend it. We have to repeat the same thing on the 5600X. You can see in the center there are two pins which are not perfectly aligned. They're not bent that bad, but you can see they're not in line. There's one more pin which is a bit of a problem on the 5600X. It's a pin which is bent in itself. You can see it on the complete edge. There are some more pins next to it, which I still have to correct and bend. But this one right here, you should not insert a CPU in a socket that has a pin bent like this. Because if the pin breaks inside a socket, then you could also break your socket because this could be stuck in there. Even though there's still a broken pin on the 5950X, we can already try to insert it back in the socket just to see if all the pins are aligned, but that looks good. Sometimes if you bend back some pins, it doesn't go as smooth as originally, but as long as you don't really need some force to insert the CPU inside the socket, then it's totally fine. Like this is, this is okay. For the 5600X, we will try to bend back the partially broken or like partially bent pin with a tweezer, but I think this might not work. But you might be able to see that it's easily moving, which means that it's partially broken and will probably just come right off. As assumed, that pin is done as well. By the way, after several months, Sheik decided to use her other cat bed again, so she can observe me while I'm doing the videos. But the 5600X also allows to be easily put into the socket now, so that's great. All the pins are at least straight. And now we can try solder back some of the broken pins. I now prepared our donor CPU with a thermocouple on the back, so I can track the temperature while we want to unsolder some of the pins. It's an A and B engineering sample I have no use for. You could also take any other like Sempron CPU for example as long as it's using the same socket for AM4 then the pins should be compatible. And now we will use the heat gun to heat up the CPU. You can see about 200 degree Celsius on the IHS and now at that temperature if you point the heat gun just for a very short time period on the CPU pins then you can easily take them off. We are quickly inspecting these pins under the USB microscope. You can see two of them. The right one looks pretty nice. You can see it's not only the pin itself, but there's also some kind of stub on the bottom, which then forms the contact directly to the PCB. The left one has a bit more solar left on the end, so I might have to clean that one, add a little bit of flux to the end, and then try to remove what's maybe too much of the solder. 
The same type of stub that remains on the pin also often remains on the CPU if the pin is breaking off. That's what you can see right here. It's a bit difficult to see, but that's the pin which is missing. But you can see this pad or like the stub is still on there. And we will first have to remove this part. And I will proceed the same way. First heat up the CPU to maybe like 180 degrees Celsius. That's a region where I know that the CPU will survive. We know that from experience because that's the region we also use for heating up the CPUs if we want to delete it to make sure that the indium solder is melting. And we know that the CPU can easily survive this type of temperature for a longer time period. It will also make the soldering much easier. If the CPU is already quite warm, then we will need almost no energy from the soldering iron to the pin to be able to remove it or even try to put it back. About three hours later, I can tell you that replacing AMD pins by hand is not going to be my new thing I'm going to do in my spare time because it's, it's very annoying and it takes a lot of time. It took me three hours to replace the two pins on the 5950X. And if you're now thinking, wait, was there not only a single pin which was broken on the 5950X? Well, some things might have happened and I had to replace a second one. So when I started with the soldering, I first had to remove the pad from the original broken pin, which was working out fairly okay. Removed the pin, added a little bit of flux, and then also made sure that there is not too much solder left on the empty pad. Then I tried using the mechanical pencil to hold the pin and to put it in place, which I thought would be the better idea for positioning but turned out that it's a bit more difficult and you cannot really reach the pin anymore with a soldering iron, which then made it almost impossible to solder it back on. So I had to change to tweezers. But then when I changed to the tweezers and tried it for several times, I accidentally knocked off the pin next to it on the left. Well, so I figured I will need a bit more time to first fix the pin on the left. I think a lot of trouble I had or like difficulties I had during the soldering was due to the fact that the CPU was not fixed underneath the USB microscope, but I had to put some like non-thermally conductive material underneath the CPU because I always had to heat up the CPU to like 180 degrees Celsius to make soldering a bit easier. But then if I would just put it on the bare metal plate of the USB microscope, then all the heat would just be instantly gone. So I had to put this material underneath, but I couldn't fix the CPU, so that made things a little bit more difficult. Interestingly though, at the point when the second pin was fixed, and when it's cooling down, you can see that it's like getting pulled into place because of the cooling down phase of the solder when it's hardening again. That's very interesting to see. Then I invested a bit more time to finally fix the pin which was originally broken and I managed to do it after a lot of attempts. Accidentally in between also connected the first with the second pin again with a little bit of solder, then had to add more flux to remove the solder, but then eventually everything worked out. And then I used the USB microscope to inspect it from all kind of directions, like from the top and from the side, to also check if the height is fine, if there's not too much solder between the pin and the pad. So the height is correct for inserting the pin back into the socket. And that looked all correct and also no short was visible. So that's the current state, I think. Time to test the CPU if it's working. What you might have noticed is that some of these pins surrounding the pins I was trying to fix also looked like they're bent. And during the process of soldering the broken pins, I also, because I was heating up the CPU to like 180 degrees Celsius, as I said before, turned out that heating up the pin, like the pin I was soldering with the soldering iron, caused some of the pins that were surrounding them to also have the solder become liquid. And then they were basically soldered on a little bit, yeah, bent. So the pins are not bent, but they're, yeah, soldered on a bit, not straight anymore. That's why I manually had to fix maybe like 15 pins afterwards as well. Putting the CPU in the socket was not 100% smooth, but it's sitting inside the socket. And now time to check if the CPU is working, if it's detecting the GPU and if all the memory sticks are present. Okay, very big relief. We have a postcode. It looks great. Very happy, big relief for me. 32 gigabyte memory detected, even the SSD is present. I will go in Windows, take some time, check if everything is working, but first look is great. 
And just to double check, I also inserted the 5600X into the socket to also check if this is starting up or not. I mean, even though there are several broken pins on there, there is always a possibility that those are pins you might not need for the main functions and it could still boot up. But as we can see right here on the debug code, we can only read out 0D and it won't post. Considering how much time it took me to fix the 5950X, I don't really want to continue with the 5600X right now, to be honest, because it's already in the evening and it will take me probably another full day. And I probably also have to do some research if there is any like technique that makes it a little bit easier than what I was doing so far, because inspecting the CPU, I was also checking the AM4 pinout. And if we check the AM4 pinout on the total left, we can see that most of the pins that are missing on my 5600X are data pins for memory. Which also explains why the CPU does not boot, because those are definitely required pins. If only a VSS pin is gone, VSS is ground, that wouldn't matter much. You can just use the CPU anyway. If a single VSS pin is gone, just don't bother, should be fine anyway. But considering that there are like four or five memory data pins gone, that's not a good sign. And those definitely have to be soldered back to make sure that the CPU will work. Yeah, we'll have to think about that. I have one more item which I received from Sven, a viewer, actually several months ago and I didn't have time to look at this so far. But it's a B450i Gaming Plus AC from MSI, Mini ITX AM4 board. And he also added a note that he accidentally killed the board. And if I ever have some spare time that I might be able to investigate this and maybe fix the board. Maybe it's a good idea for today's video. It appears to have some kind of damage to the PCB, probably caused by the cooler mounting. Not sure what exactly happened there, but right next to the two inductors, you can see there is a trace which is damaged. Also just right next to the hole, there is a bit of solder residue. Probably he tried to repair it himself. Seems like it didn't work out. If we're lucky, we only have to connect the two ends of the trace and then could work. But I'm not sure if there is any kind of additional damage inside the PCB, like right next to the hole. Now under the USB microscope we can get a better idea of the damage. I hope just underneath the dirt like there's some kind of like flux residue. I hope there are no additional damages to the PCB. But there is the hole in the trace. If we follow the trace it goes all the way up here and then goes to this pad up there. So we could even add uh, like a wire to this point. Then even go all the way down to this via, even though I don't want to do that. So I think we can just bridge over the trace, hopefully if there are no additional damages to the PCB. Compared to the AMD CPUs, the mainboard repair was pretty easy. I first removed the residues of the old flux. I think there was a residue from when he had a solder repair attempt, also removed the old solder, which was left from Sven. And then I took a very tiny wire, just a simple single wire and attached it to the top part of the trace and also connected it to the bottom part of the trace and then cut off the remaining part of the tiny wire. Now on the right side next to this tiny wire there is a via going through the PCB and I'm not quite sure if that's supposed to be connected to there. It somehow looks like it should not be connected to it and since I'm not sure about it I will not connect it for now. Worst case it will simply not start, best case it will start and um, yeah I just don't want to connect it because if it's not supposed to be connected it could be that we're causing a short. First of all I want to check if it's even starting up. That's why I don't even mount the CPU cooler, just the graphics card, some memory sticks power supply attached and then see if the CPU will get warm or not. Yeah, it's getting warm. We have some signs of life. It's getting a bit too warm. We'll simply put a cooler on and then we will find out. Now that's also a great success. We have both memory sticks detected. Obviously the GPU, otherwise we wouldn't have a display signal. Awesome. Mainboard is working. Now we don't want the trace to be removed again or this tiny wire to be ripped off. That's why I'm just going to add a little bit of protection on top. Even though we did not manage to repair everything, the 5600X is still, yeah, not sure about that one, but the 5950X and the B450 board are still a great success for me to repair the CPU and the board. We'll connect Sven on email and also return it back to him. I think that will be a good thing. Also pretty happy that it worked out with a 5950X. But for the 5600X, I will have to think about, 
yeah, maybe using a different method than what I tried so far. If you have any good idea what I could try, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.